Hey, Bill O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News. Wednesday, April 27, 2022. Stand up for your country. Sometimes that's not easy to do because we are in a down cycle in America. Everybody knows that. Everybody who is fair-minded and not an ideological zombie. I mean, this country's having a problem right now. And working people, elderly people, uh, they're getting hammered financially. And, um, you know, we don't know when it's going to end. You know, this fantasy about Joe Biden being removed and not finishing out his term, he's going to finish out his term. So, you know, people throwing that around, uh, there's no basis to it. Maybe something will happen, but not right now. Uh, in the meantime, um, what should we do? And I have a couple of answers for that in this evening's Talking Points memo. First, the facts. Okay, so let's go back to the summer of 2020. And I've told you this story before. I'll truncate it. That word of the day, truncate, that means make it shorter. But it's, it's, worth, it's worth remembering. So 2020, early August, three months before the presidential vote, Trump-Biden. I'm sitting on a beach, a beautiful beach on eastern Long Island with two friends who are liberals and have always been liberals, okay? And they're chortling about how Biden's going to be Trump and how they don't like Trump. And I'm going, yeah, but he's, he's done a pretty good job. You know, the economy's vibrant and we don't have a lot of problems around the world right now. And it looks to me like minorities are increasing their wages on average. So what's the beef? They just didn't like him. OK, because he's flamboyant, because they believe he doesn't tell the truth and on and on and on and on. Now, I don't get involved in those kinds of discussions. It's not my job to stick up for Donald Trump. I mean, he can stick up for himself. My job is to analyze what is reality. So I looked at them and I said, just listen to me on one thing. You, your children and your grandchildren are going to get hurt financially if Joe Biden wins the election. Now, that stopped them for maybe 10 seconds. And then they went, oh, no, 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 no. And I said, you mark my words. You are going to be hurt. Your family is going to suffer financially. And that's what's happened. And I know them very well. So how did I know? Because, number one, I knew that Joe Biden didn't have enough mental capacity to understand a complex economy, whereas Donald Trump does. He's a businessman. He knows supply and demand. He knows the marketplace. And Biden doesn't. Number two, I knew that Biden would spend trillions of dollars of government money on far left progressive things. I knew that and that has come true. And when the government spends trillions of dollars, it has to print more money. Therefore, the dollars that are in circulation lose value. And that's what inflation is. I also knew that Biden would attack the oil industry because he said he would. We're going to wipe them out, according to Biden. And then the unintended consequences of that added to the inflation. So I knew all that. And these people should have known it. They should have known it. But they were blinded by their hatred for Donald Trump. Since April Fool's Day, the Dow Jones is off about 700 points. The Nasdaq is off about 2,000 points. So I'm getting a lot of mail. People are panicking. Don't. If you have a stock that has a profit, you put what they call a stop order on it. If it hits a certain price, you pick the price. It automatically sells. That's what I do. Now, I've lost some stock. However, the cash that I'm raising, I'm going to use to buy other stock 
at a very low price. Now, I can't give individual financial advice. I can't do it. But my strategy is the stock market correction that we're seeing now may get worse because there's no hope for Biden's economic plan. There's no hope. And I don't know when the bottom is. No one does. But I assume, and may be wrong, that once the fall rolls around, September, the market's going to go, Democrats are going to get wiped out in November, and it will start to come up. That just makes sense to me. But it might not happen. We might go into a severe recession. I don't think we will because Americans are working. There are more jobs than people to do them. Once people are in the marketplace making money, that precludes most recessions. It's the massive layoffs that hit you in that. But American business needs labor. It needs it. And they're paying pretty good salaries. That's the only thing that's going to save us. And Biden has nothing to do with that, by the way. That's a combination of Trump raising the economy up and COVID blasting everything down. And now COVID subsiding, people are coming back. The airline is the best example. Airlines are going to make money. They're hiring like crazy. You want to work for an airline? Now's the time to apply. Okay. Now, all of this could be wrong. I'm not a macro economist, but I know enough about it, and I know a thousand times more than Joe Biden does. So therein lies my advice. Now, final thing. If you vote emotionally, if you do anything in your life based on emotion, you're probably going to get hammered in the end. Trump should have won that election. He would have won if COVID didn't hit. But he didn't help himself. He didn't. The bombast should have been brought back in. If he wants to run again, the less bombast, the better chance he has. I told him that a hundred times. He's probably, I know he's tired of hearing about it. And that's the memo. All right, Biden's schedule. Uh, I went to the funeral of Madeleine Albright, former Secretary of State. I knew her a little bit. I thought she was an honorable woman. Um, funeral was in D.C., of course. Everybody wore masks for COVID. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people are getting COVID now. Again, it's mild, but it's out there. So uh, the president delivered remarks. Uh, Madeleine Albright was a patriot. Uh, you might not have agreed with her, but uh, she did her best, in my opinion. And then later on, uh, Mr. Biden had some kind of teacher's thing. I don't know. So in the last three days, Joe Biden has met with the Tampa Bay Lightning. All right. <laughs> Won the Stanley Cup last year. He did nothing yesterday that we know of. Nothing on schedule. And today he went to the funeral of Madeleine Albright. So that's three days. Okay. You can make the call. Morning consult, political intelligence, quarterly tracking. That's a mouthful, isn't it? So if you want the stats, I have them on the message of the day on BillOReilly.com. I'm not going to go over the stats because I have them there already and there's just too many of them. But here's the headline. 40 states, individual states now, are disapproving of Biden's job performance. 33 of those states, of the 40, double-digit disapproval catastrophe. Double-digit disapproval in Arizona, in Georgia, and other what they call swing states. This is a disaster, okay? Not bad. This is something I can't see him coming back for. Ten states approve of the job President Biden's doing. Throw them on up. They are Washington State, California, Illinois, Vermont, New York, Massachusetts, Maryland, Delaware, Hawaii, Rhode Island, Oregon, not on that list. Wow. <laughs> Oregon, one of the most liberal states in the union. Anyway, all those states with the exception of, um, yeah, all the states are liberal. Everyone. Some are more than others, but they're all liberal. So they still like and think that Biden's doing a good job. Now, Joe Biden's pretty much invisible, and summer is almost here. Three weeks, summer will be upon us. Memorial Day is the start. 
you're not going to see old Joe this summer. He's going to go to Delaware and hunker down on his beach house in Rehoboth. Not going to see him. So it'll be September before we even know it. I, I mean, I don't want to, I want you all to have a good summer, and I'm planning to have a good one myself. But, you know, we're talking pretty quick to November. The war in Europe is a kind of chaos where foreign identity thieves love to target American homeowners. The crime is home title theft. It is exploding in the USA. And no, you are not covered by homeowners insurance or common ID theft services. The problem is the title to all of our homes kept online. An identity thief knows his big payday is as easy as forging your signature stating you sold your home to him. Now, he'll take out a loan and another loan against your home, and you won't even know it until the collection calls start or you get an eviction notice. So how do you protect your home from title theft? Register your address at HomeTitleLock.com to see if you are a victim already. Go to HomeTitleLock.com, HomeTitleLock.com. Okay, now the right-wing blogosphere... I don't think I've ever used that expression on the No Spin News, but it fits here. The right-wing blogosphere is a Twitter, pardon the pun, with Hunter Biden stuff. Okay, you watch uh, Fox News and uh, One America and Newsmax. It's Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden did this, Hunter Biden did that. A lot of it's BS. So I am now going to tell you what the truth is about Hunter Biden as it stands right this day. Number one, on his laptop, there is an email written by his personal assistant, who is no longer with him, a woman named Katie Dodge, D-O-D-G-E. The email says, quote, I spoke with Hunter today regarding his bills. It is my understanding that Hunt's dad will cover these bills in the short term as Hunter transitions in his career, unquote. That email was sent to a woman named Linda Shapiro, who is an accountant in Leesburg, Virginia. It was CC'd, the email was CC'd, okay, to Hunter Biden and a man named Richard Ruffner, who was a personal aide to Vice President Joe Biden. That's all fact. No debate on it. That's a fact. Now, gets a little bit murkier. We don't know how much money Joe Biden paid to cover Hunter Biden's bills. What we do know is that Hunter Biden owed $412,000 in taxes. Okay? Pretty, pretty big number. And his total bills, credit cards, all the other stuff, $819,000. Wow. So Hunter Biden owed almost a million dollars. How much did Joe pay? We don't know. Okay. Now, when that email was sent, Joe Biden was out of office. He was not a part of the federal government any longer. You should note that. Then there are the meetings when Joe Biden was vice president. So we know about them now. He was VP from 2009 to 2015. Okay, that's only six years. So, um, oh, we only have logs for that. Okay. Between the years 2009, 2015, there are logs of visits to the White House by Hunter Biden associates. Okay. So there were 19 visits. 19 visits, at least while Joe Biden was vice president, by Hunter Biden business associates. Now, they didn't all meet with the vice president or I don't think any of them met with Barack Obama. OK, but they were inside the White House. And this is according to the White House logs. 
Now, why would the vice president's son's business associates go to the White House? Why? Got to be business, right? Got to be. Not talking Washington Capitol hockey, Washington National Baseball. Got to be business, right? So that is what we know about Hunter and Joe Biden right now. As you know, there is a grand jury looking into Hunter Biden's business dealings. And with all that debt, I'm betting he's indicted. He's indicted. All hell breaks loose. Okay. Update on JetBlue. So they finally admitted what I told you, that in April, it was a catastrophe. Here is a quote from JetBlue President Joanna Garrity. We want customers who love the JetBlue experience, that would let me out, to have confidence we will deliver it to them this summer. We let our crew members and our customers down in April, and we must perform better. The investments we're making will help reduce delays and cancellations during the busiest travel period, unquote. So you remember when I first got involved with this, because my flight was more than five hours delayed, plus I had to go two hours early because it was an international flight. They denied it. Oh, it was the weather. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't our fault. Yes, it was. Told you so. Police officers in America. Not a good time to be a cop. FBI stats just released 59% increase in police intentionally killed in the line of duty from 2021 to 2020. 73 police officers intentionally killed 2021, 46 2020. Gunfire, the leading cause of the officer's death, 55 of the 73 slain were by a firearm. So far this year, 19 of the 101 officers shot happened in ambush style attacks. This year, 2022, they're ambushing police. 13 major U.S. cities had homicide records broken. They are Portland, Oregon, St. Paul, Minnesota, Indianapolis, Toledo, Rochester, Philadelphia, Columbus, Baton Rouge, Louisville, Kentucky, Austin, Tucson, Oakland, Albuquerque. Most of those cities run by progressive leftists. Supply chain issues have been a catalyst in bringing high-tech manufacturing back to the USA. My tech expert and founder of Brownstone Research calls it the Great Recalibration, and he discusses it in his newsletter, Near Future Report. For the past 35 years, he has helped his subscribers safely navigate volatile times, and he also answers your most pressing questions, like how to protect your money from inflation, what are the implications of a new digital currency, and the Great Reset. What will the Fed do with interest rates? And what is expected from the stock market in 2022? Brownstone Research has been at the forefront of nearly every major market move for the past 35 years. Let Jeff Brown help you by signing up for his newsletter today at a 75% discount. It's a 12-month subscription for only $49. Please go to jeffbrowntech.com. JeffBrownTech.com, JeffBrownTech.com. Here is the final thought of the day. As you know, I am against sugar. Sugar is bad. Tobacco is worse, but not that much worse. So go to your grocery store, your deli, pick up a drink, a soda, an iced tea, energy drink. Look at how many grams of sugar are in that drink. That's why so many Americans are obese. The block of this down, that's drinking raw sugar. Desserts, ice cream, cookies, candy, cake, and it all tastes great. I was a big dessert guy. I still am, but I'm smart now. First of all, why is sugar bad? As you get older, it 
erodes your immune system. It weakens it. So you're not able to fight off disease as much as when you were younger and you're more active and you're going to the gym every day. Okay. Number two, diabetes. You don't want to get it. Millions of Americans are not predisposed to diabetes. They just eat too much sugar. So how do we deal with this? It's not hard to deal with it. If you're a little Zoftig, all right, Rotund, you want to lose a few pounds, you can go to the diet, people, and do all that. But I'll tell you how you lose a weight without spending a penny. When you crave sugar, there are sugar substitutes without all of this garbage chemical stuff in it. I found Kind, K-I-N-D dot com. And Nice, N-I-C-E dot com. They have products that taste just as good as sugar, but very low sugar content. You got to check out your own taste. And then when you're craving a snack, because I do all the time, nuts. Now, I eat cashews, but pistachios, almonds, peanuts, a lot of oil in it, but you can eat them too. You slug a few of those nuts down with some water. And then you're not hungry anymore. All right? The water and the nuts knocks the hunger out for a while. And then after you eat a healthy meal, you get a dessert that doesn't have a high sugar content. This is how, and I'm telling you, you do that and you do four walks a week, just walk around. It'll just, like this, boom. And you'll feel... You'll have more energy. You'll feel better. Your immune system will strengthen. I'm looking out for you. Trust me. Sugar is not your friend. A couple of times a week, I get Carvel. I just opened a Carvel in my town. Okay, that was my first job. And it's great ice cream. But only maybe once a week, twice if it's a special occasion. Pizza, once a week. Discipline, 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 discipline. But in order to live a A good life, you got to have food that tastes good. Kind.com, nice.com. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. As you may know, inflation is out of control thanks to the policies of this administration. Retirement accounts are especially vulnerable now. When inflation goes up, your savings goes down. Protect your hard-earned wealth against inflation. Please call the people I trust at American Heart for Gold. They will show you how to protect your savings by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. They're the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Takes just a short phone call. and They will deliver physical gold and silver right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. Plus, tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you and they will give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. So please don't wait. Call 866-501-5201, 866-501-5201, or text BILL to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201, or text BILL to 65532. Bill O'Reilly is back on TV and only on The First. No Spin News, every weeknight at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on The First.